For more videos, visit for the sake of education.com or support me at patreon.com forward slash Dexter Bells. All right, guys, let's do this problem that says if the maximum force that each robot can support is 1500 newtons, find the greatest mass that the crate can be. So basically, what we're going to do first is find all the uni vectors. Uni vectors. So there are four uni vectors, one going towards C, one going towards B, one going towards A, and one going straight down for the uh, hole in the crate. So to find all these uni vectors, the first thing that you need to do is you need to find all the points involved, point A, point B, and point C. Now A sits at 2 in the I, minus 3 in the J, plus 1 in the K. B sits at 1 in the i minus 2 in the j plus 2 in the k and C sits at negative 3 in the i plus 2 in the j plus 3 in the k. The next thing you need to do is find basically vectors OA, OB and OC but they're the same as vectors A, B and C because O is right at the origin so I'm not going to bother with that. So to find the unit vector that goes from O to A, you basically need to divide a vector A by its magnitude. So first you need to find the magnitude of A. The magnitude of A is given by the X component square plus the Y component square plus the C component square. So 2 square plus 3 square plus 1 square and square root is equal to 3.61. And the unit vector that goes from O to A is given by the vector a divided by its magnitude and it comes out to be 0.555 in the i minus 0.832 in the j plus 0.277 in the k so you gotta go through the same motions for b and for c the magnitude of b is 3 the magnitude of c is 4.69 and univector OB comes out to be 0.333 in the I minus 0.667 in the J plus 0.667 in the K and univector OC is equal to negative 0.640 in the I plus 0.426 in the J plus 0.640 in the K and then we got the last uni vector, which is a uni vector for the crate. It's going straight down in the C axis, which means it's simply negative one in the K. So once you do that, the second step is to multiply uni vectors by tensions slash forces. Now we got uh, three tensions and one force. I mean, actually they're all forces because it's a rod. So we got the force going towards B, the force going towards C, and the force going towards A, and the tension created by the weight of the crate. So this is the weight. Now, basically we have the force going towards A, force going towards B, force going towards C, and the weight of the crate. And you're going to multiply each one by its respective univector. So univector OA, univector OB, univector OC, and the univector for the crate, which are the univectors that we just found. So this comes out to be for the first one, point 555 five, five, FA in the I minus 0.832 FA in the J plus 0.277 FA in the K. For the second one is 0.333 FB in the I minus 0.667 FB in the J plus 0.667 F B in the K. Third one is 
negative 0 0.640 FC in the I plus 0 0.426 FC in the J plus 0 0.640 FC in the K and this one is 0 in the I plus 0 in the J minus the weight is the acceleration of gravity times the mass m in the k. So I replaced the weight of the crate by 9.81 times the mass we're trying to find. Because remember this is m times g and g is 9.81 because we're in newtons. You know that since this is statics and this is equilibrium, when you add them together you get 0 in the i plus 0 in the j plus 0 in the k. So now with this little diagram we can figure out our three equations. Now in the I we have 0.555 FA plus 0.333 FB minus 0 0.640 FC is equal to zero plus zero is equal to zero and we have to do the same thing for each one for the j and for the k so this is minus point eight three two f a minus point six six seven f b plus point four two six f c is equal to zero and the last one is point two seven seven FA plus 0.667 FB plus 0 0.640 FC minus 9.81 times the mass but I'm going to put that at the right side 9.81 times the mass so now that we have this uh, we have three equations and we have four variables counting the the mass but don't, don't worry about that forget about this don't treat this as a variable for now basically think of it as if you have three variables all the ones in the left side of these three equal signs fa fb and fc now i'm going to treat fa as if it was x fb as if it was y and fc as if it was z and that's just to make it to make it look pretty you know it's not you can keep it as it is and I'm going to solve this uh, system by using uh, matrices. I know some of you keep criticizing me for doing this, but I'm going to continue to do it because it's the way I like to do it. You can solve those system of equations in other algebraic ways if you so please. If you want to see how I do it, just stick around. So for matrices, basically what you got to do is you got to find the main determinant. I'm going to try to be as neat as possible. So basically you got to build a matrix, a uh, 3 by 3 matrix with all the coefficients on the left side of the equal signs. So that would look something like this. 0 0.555 minus 0 0.832, 0 0.277, the second one is 0 0.333 minus 0 0.667, this is positive 0 0.667, and this last one is minus 0 0.640. 0.426 and this is 0 0.640 and then you need to find the determinant uh, the first thing that you need to do is rewrite first and second column minus 0 0.832 0 0.277 and then you need to do positive and negative diagonals basically what you got to do is the ones that I'm connecting with the line you gotta multiply them and add them together and then the ones I'm adding now with the lines the negative diagonals you gotta multiply them each of these three and then subtract them and once you got the six values the top the top three are uh, positive the bottom three are negative then you're gonna get that this is equal to negative point one six nine in case you didn't catch it, this is 0 0.555 times negative 0 0.67 times 0 0.640 plus 0 0.333 times 0 0.426 times 0 0.277, you know, etc. 
plus this times this times this then minus this times this times this minus this times this times this minus this times this times this and when you get all of that into your calculator you get that this is the main determinant then it becomes very easy from here the determinant of x remember I changed the values for x y and c all you got to do is replace the first column by the coefficients on the right side of the equal sign which are 0 0 and 9.81 with the m in this case <clears throat> just do it with the m trust me and then the rest of the matrix stays the same negative 0.667 0.667 and negative 0 0.640, 0 0.426, 0 0.640. And then you rewrite the first, second column, you do go through the same motions that you went above, but now it's much easier because you got a bunch of zeros in this matrix and you only have two values that really matter. You see what I mean? Just go through the same motions. And you're going to get that the determinant for x is equal to negative 2.8m. Therefore, um, x is equal to the, actually let me do this in the end, it's much easier to do it in the end. Just keep this value, this value is important. This value is important and the determinant is negative, remember the signs, the signs are important too. Then you find the determinant of y, which is the same thing, you put the same values of the first matrix, these values right here. but in the middle column you change it for 9.81 m and you keep the same values then you go through the same motions as i went on the first matrix and you're going to get that the determinant of y is equal to negative 17.3 m and you do the same for the determinant of c first and second remain the same as the original matrix and for the last one you replace it for 009.81m and you're going to get that the determinant for c is equal to 5.4m notice that this one is positive that is important so when you go through all the matrix motions and you get the values that i told you then you can solve for x, y, and c very easily. x is equal to the determinant of x over the main determinant, and it gives you, remember the signs, it's going to give you 16.55m. y is equal to the determinant of y over the main determinant, and that is going to give you 17.3m. And I made a mistake. I made a copy mistake on my notes. This one it's not 17.3m. This one is actually 2.92m. And this last one is actually negative 0.914m. I'm sorry about that. So many notes. So these are the values that you get by dividing the determinant by the main determinant and the c is equal to the determinant of c over the main determinant and that is equal to 5.4m so as you can see the first thing that I need to answer why is this y negative that is because originally I assumed that these were the direction of the forces but the fact that the y is negative, and remember the y is the one that represents Fb, that just means that the force is backwards. It's pointing that way. So we correct it on our diagram, and then we can just change it to positive. We just got to correct it on the diagram. I like to make a little note and say correct it to remember that I flipped the, th the thing that I did originally. That's the only reason why it's negative, so there's no need to panic. Once you do that, all you need to do is sort them from the biggest to the smallest. You know that y is the biggest, obviously, 17.3 times the mass. Then is the x, which is 16.55 times the mass, and the c holds the least amount of, of uh, force. And then all you got to do is replace the biggest, which is y. y is equal to the limit that this can be, 1500 newtons. 
and you know that y is equal to 17.3 times the mass and all you gotta do is solve for the mass and the mass comes out to be 86.7 kilograms and that is the final answer again I apologize about the copy mistake I made right here and right here is because I have lots of matrices in my notes and you see how messy this get you gotta be very neat please comment below if you want me to do any problems and I'll be happy to help thank you